Top of the evening, Sunday Sessions, episode 22, the holiday edition. Thanksgiving is right around the corner. I got a lot to be grateful for. I'm sure all of you have a lot to be grateful for. So make sure you take a couple minutes out of the next couple days to appreciate all the beautiful things you have in life. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Eric Castellano and I'm the founder of Amazon Lit, a consulting business that helps Amazon sellers, e-commerce sellers, just like yourself, build very profitable Amazon businesses. So we're about to get started here. See you inside, stay lit. What's up, everybody? So listen, a few things I want to talk about today. First thing being end of Q4 strategies. Second thing being 2022 strategies, right? Because the holiday season's almost over. So you got Thanksgiving, you got Christmas, Hanukkah, New Year's, boom, brand new year. Welcome to 2022. We are officially in the future. So you wanna be prepared for what's gonna happen in 2022. Now, I have a very strong belief that e-commerce is going to continue to skyrocket next year, without a doubt in my mind. It's been growing year after year, and next year, 2022, is going to be no different, my friend. Absolutely no different. Ton of opportunity, we could all get a piece of the pie. There's enough pie there to split up where we can all eat, all make some money, all live comfortably, pay off that debt, pay off that car, that student loan, buy your wife that new engagement ring, whatever you wanna do, it's available to you, but you gotta take action. Sitting around watching you know, dozens of hours of YouTube videos isn't going to allow you to achieve those goals. So before we get into 2022, the first thing I really wanna talk about is the end of 2021, right? What opportunities you should be looking out for and how to really capitalize your sales so you can have the best Q4 that you've ever had before that's what we're doing and I want you to do that as well so first things first you want to have an aggressive pricing strategy you want to make sure your products are optimized and listed at prices that give you the opportunity to land in the buy box we know a lot of shopping happens in the buy box the buy box is like the treasure map to success on Amazon the more buy box priority you have the bigger your business will grow plain and simple so you want to make sure a that you're using a repricer if you're not using one B that you're going through it consistently especially in the next couple weeks you want to be looking at those products daily looking for indicators especially in your orders tab of fast selling SKUs or SKUs that aren't selling at all. If you find some fast selling SKUs, you may have an opportunity to increase their floor price, capitalize on more profit per sale, and grow your business that way. If you happen to find some products that aren't selling, you'll be able to decrease their floor price and capitalize on that buy box to get rid of that inventory. That's step number one. Step number two, you're gonna wanna be sourcing some of these deals that pop up. Right, some of these retail deals that pop up. I don't sleep on the retail deals that pop up at the end of the season. We just spent about $15,000 on a retail deal from a retailer that I'm sure a lot of you shop at, but we do it a little different. And I wanna teach you something how you can do it a little different right now in this moment right here. So if you're ready for that, send me a yes in the comments and I'm gonna deliver that heat to you because I'm trying to get you to think outside the box here, right? Cause that's how growth happens. You gotta think outside the box. You can't be thinking like everybody else cause everybody else is doing what everybody else is doing. You gotta be thinking outside the box and growing your business this way all right so what you should be doing is capitalizing on these retail deals a lot of these retailers have huge discounts on these products now what most of you would do and what we used to do we would go into a retail store see a 15% coupon 20% coupon $10 off coupon whatever the discount is doesn't matter right and you say okay I'm gonna buy 10 of these because that's what I see on the shelves failing to realize that if you find a manager in that store and you say hey can you check your system do you have another pallet in the back that you're waiting two days to put out? Or can you check your system and contact your other managers? Is there another store here that has more inventory that's not on the floor that I can save you and your employees the time of even bringing it to the floor and putting it on the shelves and I will buy all of it, absolutely all of it. We just did this the other day. We do this every year at the end of the year because these deals pop up and we just can't let them go. So I wanna know like, hey, is this all your inventory? Because if it is, I will purchase every single last piece from you. I don't care if it's 15, 20, 25K, whatever it's gonna cost me to get it because this is an opportunity that just should not be slept on. Absolutely should not be slept on, right? So between repricing, capitalizing on these end of the year deals, and then just making sure that you're still keeping ample products in stock. And now because it's the end of the year and Amazon has some cutoffs of what FBA stock will be available in order for to be sold, to be delivered for these holidays that 
are coming up, like Black Friday is already too late. If you don't have Amazon inventory and FBA, Black Friday, you missed it, right? But you still got Christmas right around the corner and these other holidays around the corner. So you want to be optimizing your inventory for this. So that may mean a shift from FBA to FBM. Now, when I say a shift from FBA to FBM, I do not mean across the board. I'm talking holiday specific products, products that you get a premium for during this holiday season. Those are the products you're going to want to switch. If you don't have them in FBA yet and you're waiting to send them, it might be too late. So I'm just giving you a warning. It might be too late. You want to get those products into Amazon or direct to the customer. So if you don't have them in FBA, you might want to turn on that FBM switch and ship them fulfilled by merchant so you can get them to the customer in a couple days. Huge opportunity there. Do not sleep on that opportunity. But that does not mean you stop sending in your regular inventory because some products just aren't holiday products. Let's face it. Shampoos, conditioners, all that everyday stuff. People are buying those year round anyway. So don't sleep on the opportunity that exists regardless of what holiday season it is because you should be always sending consistent FBA inventory in because the opportunity is astronomical. I promise you that. All right. Well, listen, we locked it in. We locked in the 2021 end of the year goals between repricing, capitalizing on retail deals, and then making sure you're transitioning some of your SKUs, your holiday SKUs that you might not get in stock in time from FBA to FBM, sending them to the customer so they can get them and open them up with their family and friends during the holiday season. So you can provide that experience because that's what it's all about. Now, 2022, what do you need to be doing in order to grow your business in 2022? Which I can't even believe that it's 2022. Like that is crazy. I remember when it was year 2000, I was maybe 13, 14 years old, hanging out at my house. My parents went out. It was me and my brother. We were doing all that dumb stuff little kids do, running around like crazy people. And it just feels like literally, it was just a couple years ago. It was 22 years ago. Time flies when you're having fun. I'll tell you that one for sure. But 2022 strategy, right? It's very similar to the other year's strategies. It has the same foundation. But in order to grow, you need to diversify a little bit, right? So if you're only selling in one or two categories, if you're only selling in, let's say toys and baby, you need to branch out. You're limiting your growth by focusing on one or two categories or three categories, sell in all the categories. The, all the Selling in all the categories is what really is going to allow you the opportunity to continue to grow your company week after week, month after month, year after year. Start building relationships with wholesalers and distributors. Now I know everybody's going to say, E, I don't know how to do that yet. That's so challenging. All of them tell me no. It's just, I, I called 50 of them. Only one of them opened an account with me and the ones that opened an account their products were trash so what do i do from here listen be consistent and persistent persistent and consistent if you do that you're guaranteed that you're going to hit that honey hole one day and it's absolutely going to change your business absolutely it's going to change your business i'm a firm believer you're one distributor away one distributor away from changing the course of your life with a distributor that has phenomenal margins phenomenal selection of inventory that you could purchase and just grow your company. And then from that vendor, it will open up other doors. I think from my personal experience that one of the greatest opportunities being an Amazon business owner was getting a few great distributors because those distributors, lo and behold, end up introducing you to other distributors. And then you start going to these trade shows and these distributors are all hanging out together. And then they let you in their circle. And then all of a sudden you're hanging out with all the distributors and now doors start are opening, but always keep in mind throughout the entire 2022 next year, you got to spend money to make money. You can't be cheap. Don't be stingy. You got to invest in yourself and you got to invest in inventory in order to grow. If you're going to try to nickel and dime yourself your way to the top, you can do it, but it's going to take a very, very long time. So don't be cheap. Invest in yourself, invest in your mind, invest in learning more, and also invest in your business. Don't be afraid to book that flight and go to that trade show you never went to. Don't be afraid to book that flight and go meet with that vendor that wants to have lunch. Don't be afraid to jump in your car and drive four hours to go to this trade show. Do it. It's good for your business. It's beneficial and it gets you uncomfortable and growth happens in the uncomfortability phase. So I encourage you to be uncomfortable as often as possible because the more that you're uncomfortable, the more that you will grow and the more that you grow, the more opportunity that will present itself for you to be uncomfortable in brand new situations that can absolutely 
absolutely change your life if you take advantage of them. But if you sit on the wayside and you don't capitalize on that opportunity, I promise you, you will always be wondering what would have happened if I just did that. And that's not a good place to live in because that's living in fear. And fear does not benefit me. It does not benefit you. So 2022, it's going to be a phenomenal year. It's literally going to change a lot of people's lives. So first thing I talked about, diversifying your business, selling more products in more categories. Second thing I talked about, finding more distributors. You got to find more distributors. And if you're not doing wholesale yet, give it a try. Just give it a try, right? I always say this. I'm going to go all in for one year. Right now, I'm doing it with NFTs. I'm going all in for one year. If I fall on my face, make no money and miserable after that year, I could always go back to doing what I used to do, which was not buying and selling NFT. Give yourself one year. If you put your all into the next year and you go all in on Amazon and after 12 months, you are not satisfied with the results, you can always go back to being a bartender. You can always go back to being an accountant. You can always go back to being a librarian. You can always go back to being a teacher. You can always go back to what you used to do. But if you don't take the risk and move forward, you'll never know what's out there. So I encourage you also in 2022, do things that make you uncomfortable. That's step number three, right? You got to get uncomfortable. So I encourage you all do something in the next 24 hours to start that movement in the end of 2021 of doing thing that's getting uncomfortable. Well, that's going to go take salsa lessons or calling that girl that you've been wanting to take out to dinner or calling that vendor that you've been pushing off and changing your calendar every day. Call this guy, call this guy, call this guy. Just do it. Absolutely. Just do it. All right, listen, I got to time for one or two questions chia and then i gotta break out hey i can ask you how can i ungate my grocery i'm new seller on amazon please help yeah so to get ungated you're going to need to follow the prompts when you create a listing so when you create a test listing or regular listing on amazon it's going to prompt you to pages right and it's going to say either you're approved or it won't even that won't even pop up you can create the merchant skill or it's going to make you jump through some hoops you always want to continue to click through those prompts so you can get to the end of it and then it will tell you exactly what you need it tells you on amazon seller central and a majority of the time it's going to be an invoice from a distributor with your business name your business address on it the distributor's phone number contact email information on it a minimum of 10 units and then you'd be able to upload that document an invoice not a pro forma right not a pending invoice that hasn't been paid which is a pro forma but an invoice a paid invoice that documents that hey i paid for this inventory i own it here it is i'm submitting it to you now to get ungated in the category hey do you think this is the last week to send to fba for a holiday related SKUs. Yeah, absolutely. You, you might get away with it by getting it. We already had today, just to give you a little insight. So we schedule our shipments, right? And we have a shipment every day, six days a week that goes to Amazon. Today, we just got a notification that Wednesdays, Thursdays, Friday shipment were all moved to Saturday. So we got three shipments going in on Saturday, three full truckloads. Saturday shipment was moved to Monday and Monday shipment was moved to Tuesday. So they're already pushing back shipments. Right. So if you got to get your inventory literally sent out by the end of the week, if you want to guarantee it will sell for the holidays and get into the customer's hands, because this holiday season is going to be the biggest e-commerce holiday season ever that's ever existed in the history. A lot of people are going to be shopping. That means UPS is going to be overwhelmed. FedEx is going to be overwhelmed. USPS is going to be overwhelmed. They're going to be bringing on more people. It's just there's just not enough people to do it all until we get some drones out there flying around. It's just not going to happen. So listen, everybody. This has been a pleasure. A couple days from now, what, Thanksgiving? So I encourage you, like I said at the beginning of this call, spend a few minutes in reflection about what you're grateful for, right? I'll start it off. I'm grateful for three things. I'm grateful for my family, right? Absolutely am I grateful for my family. I'm grateful for my health. I have the ability to go about my life as I please because I'm healthy. And I'm also super grateful for each and every one of you. So I started off your time. Three things you're grateful about. Have a beautiful day. Stay lit.